new generation iPads. Okay, uh, we're back. And ladies and gentlemen, the um, uh, new Black Panther Party, the last time they were in the news, you may remember this, uh, since the Duke lacrosse case, was when they and uh, Minister Farrakhan sat down for dinner with Mahmoud Ahmadinejad in New York. That was back in September of 2010. They met with uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the um, lunatic that runs Iran, and Calypso Louis of the Nation of Islam. And they have offered a $10,000 bounty. They have uh, put 5,000 black men on the case to track down George Zimmerman. They're offering a $10,000 bounty for whoever turns him over to them. I... Uh, I want to share with you some, some thoughts here from Jay Nordlinger, who is a friend of mine. He writes a, a piece at National Review called Impromptus. And it's all about where we are in the country in terms of um, race. He says, every once in a while, something will happen that makes me think, oh, yeah, that's why I became a conservative in the first place. Ever happened to you? Robert De Niro made a joke. This is a joke. Sometimes, often, jokes tell us something. De Niro said, Callista Gingrich, Karen Santorum, Ann Romney, do you really think our country is ready for a white first lady too soon, right? Now, when I was growing up, the liberals around me seemed to think of everything and everyone in black and white. I The same thing. I have the same observation that Jay Nordlinger has. I, it, is, it is the left that doesn't see the humanity in people, they see the surface. It's the left who sees black and white, male and female, gay and straight, whatever, because they groupify everybody, and they victimize everybody, and they don't ever just see people. They see race, they see gender, they see sexual orientation first, and, and Nordlinger writes here, when he was growing up, the liberals around him had race on the brain. People weren't people with their virtues and flaws. They were skin colors. He writes, does it occur to you that Michelle Obama is black? Not to me. It occurs to me she's a left winger, a fitness enthusiast, a left winger, a fashion plate, a left winger, a jet setter, a left winger. And I can say the same thing about Obama. I remember... Back on January 16th of 2009, when I first said, I hope he fails, everybody said to me, how can you say that? It's the first black president. I got past that after he won the election. He's not black to me. He's a left winger. This guy has ideas that I totally disagree with. That's who he is to me. He's not black. He's not anything. He's a human being. He's a liberal or worse who I hope fails implementing his ideas. Now, everybody who criticized me knew exactly what I meant, by the way. That outrage back then over I hope he fails was fake and ginned up, uh, just like practically every bit of outrage about me is, is manufactured. This is just the way it is. But I, I got past the historical aspect of his election the day of the election, the day after. Okay. Fine, we've elected our first black president. Now, who is he? Because the media had not told us who he was during the campaign. He had not been vetted. And by the same way, just as, just as Jay Nordlinger here talks about Michelle Obama, I, I really do not see a black woman. I see somebody who's trying to force us to eat what she thinks we ought to eat, to exercise the way she thinks that we ought to exercise, and I see that that's none of her business whether she's first lady or not. That's what I see. Now, Nordlinger says, does it occur to you that those other women, those other wives, meaning De Niro, the one that De Niro talked about, Callista Gingrich, Karen Santorum, and Romney, when you look at them, do you see that they're white? Is the first thing you notice about them? No. It... To, don't know enough about them to think of them as anything at all, but I'm pretty sure their skin color is one of the least important things about them, to me, says Jay Nordlinger. And then he says, how sad and how wrong to live in a black and white world. 
Of the shooting victim in Florida, Trayvon Martin, President Obama said, you know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. Yeah, so? What if he wouldn't look like Trayvon? What difference does that make? And I, I know what Nordlinger means here. What if the victim had been Chinese? Or freckly, red-headed Irish-American? Or Jewish? What? What prompts somebody to say, yeah, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon? What is the point? I, this is all, it really is foreign to me. The way the people on the left think and the way they view, the way they see things. Nordlinger continues here. What is wrong with people? Do we really serve the God of biology? What Barack Obama's offspring would look like? Isn't that the least important thing about the Trayvon Martin case? And he's right. It is the least important thing, what the kid looks like. This poor kid was shot. And the President of the United States' only public reaction, Margaret, if I had a son, he'd look like that. For what purpose does one say that? And what must you be thinking about this situation to think that and then say it? Questions answer themselves, obviously. If I remember correctly, this is Nordlinger writing, if I remember correctly, Chris Rock once had a talk show which had Jesse Jackson as a guest, and the host, Chris Rock, said to Jesse Jackson, could you tell me something, Reverend? I've always wondered, what is it you do? A few days ago, Jesse Jackson said, blacks are under attack. Nordlinger writes, that's what he does. When Rick Santorum spoke out against internet porn, he was supposed to have committed some grave political error. Why is he hung up on porn? We have big, big problems. Serious fish to fry. Why does he get so distracted about internet porn? Well, my reaction... Is somebody in favor of it here? What's it, it is a huge problem. Our whole cultural rot is a big problem. What was the big faux pas that Santorum made? I didn't see it as a faux pas. I'll be honest, I didn't understand everybody else thinking that it was a huge political gaffe. There's a lot of stuff in this country that needs fixed. There are a lot of things that are wrong. Cultural rot is in the middle of this mix. Some of the cultural rot going on in this country is a direct descendant of political decisions and political programs that have been put into place. Santorum's mistake is that he assumes a lot of people think and see things as he does. And a lot do, but the political class doesn't. Political class gets fixated on whatever the issue of the day is, as defined by the mainstream media, and then rolls with that. But he's exactly right here. I, 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 I do not understand, and I have no problem saying so, I do not understand the President of the United States not saying anything when a group of citizens issues a bounty for another citizen in the United States of America and the President or his Justice Department don't even seem interested in that. And then when this young kid gets shot in Sanford, Florida, the reaction is, if I had a son, he would look like me. Sorry, last thing that ever occurs to me when somebody gets shot. When somebody's murdered, the last thing is that they look like me. It doesn't compute. But the left, they see things like this purely as surface matters. These are political opportunities for these people. That's the sad thing about this. Here you have the death of an American citizen that's seen as a political opportunity. There's no humanity in that. There's no compassion in that. It's just, as Dawn would say, it's very sad. And it is.